Y'all, it's time for us to talk about peppers. Hello everyone, I'm Kim and you're at Kim's Cozy Corner and we are going to talk about pepper seeds, which ones to plant and which ones to maybe wait to next year. Hello everyone and welcome back. I am going to do the exact same thing with peppers that I did with tomatoes. Now I don't have quite as many pepper varieties, but I do have quite a few and I would like to go through them with you and talk about the ones that did well, the ones that I'll plant again, and the ones that I'll probably just wait to next time. I like to divide my peppers up into three categories and it's all based on heat. So I have my sweet or non-heat or no heat peppers. I have what I call medium heat peppers and then I call the hot stuff. And my family's not really big on hot peppers but there are a few that I will grow. But let's start with sweet peppers because that's where I like to spend my time. When it comes to sweet peppers, I grow a variety of sweet peppers. And of those sweet peppers, they come in many different shapes and sizes. So the first thing that we need to do is talk about the different shapes of my sweet peppers and then talk about the different peppers for each. Now, when I say I plant sweet peppers, I think I planted last year, I, I definitely planted my green stalk full of sweet peppers. So I had four tiers, six tier, six pockets in each tier. So that's 24 plants by itself. And then I had plants over at the neighbors. And then I had plants in my raised beds. So y'all, I had peppers everywhere, just like I had tomatoes everywhere. I probably ended up with somewhere between 60 or 70 pepper plants. And most of those were sweet or non-heat peppers. So we will start with those. The first shape that I would like to talk about are what I call bell-shaped peppers. Um, your traditional bell shapes like your California Wonders. Now, California Wonder is a bell-shaped um, pepper. The longer you leave it on the vine, the sweeter it will get. They start green, and this particular one will turn red if you leave it on and let it fully ripen. Now, bell-shaped peppers or bell peppers can come in other um, colors besides green, when you pick them early, before they turn red. They also come in an orange color, and this is actually called a California orange bell is what this is actually called. And same difference, bell pepper, but when it's fully ripe, it's orange. And these seeds are from 2011, 2011. So these seeds are, how old is that, 13 years old? 13 year old seeds. I planted them last year. They germinated and I enjoyed yellow bell peppers in my garden. So don't count your seeds out just because they're a year old. 13 year old seeds and they germinated. Now, when you're trying to germinate your seeds, you may want to plant a few extra just to make sure you get good germination because over time the germination will start to decline. So we have red bell peppers. We have orange bell peppers. I also have a I call it a kaleidoscope or a carnival mix. I think is what Burpee calls it now. This carnival mix, um, it's a whole bunch of different bell peppers of all different shapes and sizes. And so there's purple, there's white, there's red, there's orange. There are a lot of different shapes in there. And I have seeds from 2013. I have seeds from 2010. You know, y'all, I hold on to my seeds for a long time. Some of these seeds were given to me by my neighbor and I will plant them just the same. But when I am planting my pepper seeds, I do plant extra seeds just in case I get poor germination. So we did the reds, we did the orange, we did the mixture. 
I also have a purple bell pepper. Now I got these from the Rustic Garden a few years ago and it's a bell pepper, it's just purple. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Outside of the color of the bell pepper, there are a few other unique traits on some bell peppers. For example, I grow King of the North. This King of the North bell pepper is a little larger than your standard California Wonder bell pepper. It's a larger bell. It's still, you know, a very blocky wall um, pepper. And it says that it's early and it's great for Northern gardeners. So for those who don't know, I am in Southwest Ohio. I'm in zone 6A and Typically we have spring for like two weeks, then we jump right into summer. And then you never know, winter may jump up early, it may never show up. So King of the North was designed and developed for Northern gardeners. And it's a blocky fruit that starts off green and when it's fully ripe, it's red. The other interesting thing about these that I noticed in the garden this past year is that when they fruit, so once the bloom fruits and you have a fruit, the little bitty bell peppers face upwards. I, I've never seen it before. They don't turn down until the fruit is much larger. And I don't know, is that something unique to King of the North bell peppers? I don't remember ever seeing that before, but that is something with the King of the North bell peppers. The King of the North is from Baker's Creek. I wasn't telling you which companies, but you saw all of the different packets there. Um, there is another pepper It's called the yellow monster. This is a behemoth yellow bell pepper. And y'all, it says it can get eight inches long by four inches wide. I mean, y'all, that is a long bell pepper. And this will be my first season growing it. I already have some of this pepper germinating downstairs in my indoor growth space, and we're gonna add it to my green stalk where I'm overwintering peppers. So we're gonna get a jump start on this one, which is a great thing because we want to make sure we have time to get these beautiful peppers. And the last bell-shaped pepper that I will be growing this year is called a Zulu. The Zulu, it's shaped like a bell, right? and it's a really deep purplish color. It says that it's super sweet. The difference about this though, it has thin walls. Typically your bell peppers have a thicker um, wall to the, the shape, but this one has a thin flesh. So it's gonna be a lot thinner even though it has the bell blocky shape. Now that's all of my bell peppers. Again, bell peppers are sweet peppers. If you don't want them super sweet, pick them early. If you leave them on the vine and let them fully ripen, they're gonna be super sweet. Now outside of those, I also grow sweet peppers that are more, I call elongated or horn shaped. And they come in many different shapes or many different varieties as well. And so Jimmy Nardello did really, really well in my garden over this past year. This is an Italian pepper and it has a thin skin wall to it and it's good for frying. So if you want a fried, uh, if you want to like stir fry a pepper or um, put it in something where you're gonna, you know, eat the peppers fried, you know, like a good cheesesteak sub or something like that, these peppers are awesome, but the difference is they're long. The walls are very thin on this pepper. Super sweet though. I'll also be growing the banana pepper. And banana peppers can come in many different um, heats from a spicy standpoint. This particular banana pepper is the classic Hungarian wax pepper and it's sweet. And I already have some of these growing downstairs as well, so we'll get a jump start on these banana peppers because I wanna make sure I have plenty to can in this upcoming season. The last thinner 
longer pepper will be this mixture. It's a long pepper mix, they're sweet. And when they ripen, some of these are going to be um, yellow and some of these are gonna be more red in, in color, but these are super sweet. It's a mix of, mm -hmm, I'm gonna to try to say this, Corno de Toro, Corno, Corno de Toro, which means red bull's horn shaped fruit. I guess that's what that means. Anyway, they're super sweet. They're gonna be a variety of colors. And look y'all, these seeds are from 2012. I grew these last year and they produced in my garden. I believe all of the ones I got were red though. It wasn't a good mixture. And again, since they're old, we had to plant even more seeds to make sure we had good germination. Moving on over, um, I'm gonna start talking about some long horn shaped peppers, but the walls are getting a little thicker now. So Pippin's Golden Honey, I'm actually growing it indoors right now in my hydroponic system. And it's already put on true leaves. I've already cut them back to make a nice bushy plant out of it. Now I've never had a chance to taste these yet, but these are multicultural or multicolored sweet peppers. And it says it's from Philadelphia and is a well-known African-American community uh, pepper um, from the early 1900s is what it says on here. But you're looking at oranges and, and purple colors and it says it's super sweet. Cubanel is my next pepper. And I love this Cubanel, y'all. And I have two different Cubanels here. And one is from M.I. Gardener. The other one where did this one come from? Walmart. <laughs> this other one is from Walmart from 2008. Y'all, when I say seeds last a long time, y'all, I'm not joking. These are from 2008 and they did grow in my green stalk this past season. I harvested them this past season. I also had them over at my neighbor's they were able to get the cubanelles as well. And these seeds are for 2008. Y'all, you don't have to buy seeds every year. If you're looking for something new and different though, you, need, you might need to get some seeds. But I went ahead and purchased some new seeds for this upcoming season from M.I. Gardener. Again, it's just a cubanelle pepper. And um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, since these seeds are already more than 10 years old, that if I get poor germination, I have a backup plan. All right. Now, this horn shape is getting longer and thicker with every pepper that I'm sharing with you. The next pepper that's super, super sweet is the Joe Parker. The Joe Parker has thick walls. It's super sweet, is great for roasting. And I did get a pretty large harvest of this one. And so I definitely waited for these to fully ripen. And then I just chopped them up and froze them. So when I need peppers, I just go to the freezer, take them out the freezer. And I have all the peppers I need all season long. So we're not buying peppers at the grocery store anymore. But Joe Parker, uh, again, it produced very well. I had it in my green stalk as well as in my raised bed garden. Delicious and sweet. But I'm moving to my two favorite, most favorite horn-shaped peppers. The first one I wanna share with you is the giant Marconi, 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 however you say it. It's, this one is from M.I. Gardner. I've purchased it from many companies before, but this past season I purchased these from M.I. Gardner. I'm not purchasing anymore because I have plenty and they last for many years. This one can get big, y'all. It can get about eight inches long. You can stuff these peppers. They're super, super sweet. And y'all, when I say they're good, y'all, I'm not playing. This is a good pepper. It's my number two favorite pepper. Number two. My number one favorite pepper, and I don't have a picture, so I'm gonna have to find a picture and I'm gonna have to put it up here. But my 
favorite all-time pepper is the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, I'm just so you can see the seed pack, it's from Burpees. And here's the picture right here. Thunderbolt can get up to 13 inches long. And if you leave them on the vines till they're a dark red, y'all, you're going to need a cavity. You're going to have to go see the dentist because they're that sweet. It's the sweetest pepper I have ever tasted in my entire life. Thunderbolt. If you've never heard of it, give it a try. I've been growing Thunderbolt now for, I think, three years. Yes, this is my fourth year coming up with the Thunderbolt. And... Y'all, my seed's getting kind of low. I might have to purchase some of those. And there's about seven or eight seeds in there. We should be good to go for one more year. And I have some of those overwintering downstairs in my indoor growth space. So hopefully we'll get a jump on the season, especially with Thunderbolt. Now, Thunderbolt and the giant Marconi have a little longer uh, period to germination. It takes a little longer. So it says up to 80 days for the Thunderbolt. And for the Marconi, it says 75 days. So it takes a while for these peppers to get ready and get super sweet. Now you can pick them green and you can cook them as frying peppers or whatever. And they're still really good peppers. But if you want them super sweet, you're gonna need to leave them on the vine a little longer. Now the next two peppers, they're not sweet peppers. They're not sweet. They're not spicy. They're kind of unique peppers. And so I'm putting them behind the sweet peppers because they're not super sweet, but they're not spicy either. The first one is the nata pino. It has the taste and the flavor of a, of a jalapeno, but with no heat. There is no heat in this pepper. I grew it this past year for the first time and it produced like crazy. I mean, they germinated fast. The plants were loaded down with fruit on this one, not a pino. So if you like jalapeno, but you just don't like that heat, give this one a try. And then there's another one that I'm gonna grow this year. And this is gonna be the first year for me and it's the habanada. So if you like a habanero and you like the taste of it, but you don't like the heat, try the habanada pepper. It says it has all of the notes of a habanero without any heat. And it's this beautiful tangerine color. So we're giving this a try for the first time this year. So if you like to make cowboy candy, but you just don't like the spice, there you go. There is the, there's that cowboy candy for you right there. Now that's it for all of my sweet, no heat peppers. Um, I do have a few California Wonder red bell peppers that I got from a seed share. And I, I did plant a couple of these as well because I like to mix things up. If one particular variety of peppers don't do well from one um, source, there's always another source out there. So these may have been my best ones while I struggled with one of the other varieties. So I like to mix it up. And so the seed sharing is always a good thing, y'all. There's no reason for us to be paying tons and tons of money for seeds every year, especially when they last season to season, if you take care of your seeds and if you're sharing your seeds with others. So now we are going to move into what I call my medium heat peppers. Let's see. Yeah, we'll call these medium heat. Now, for some people, you may say, there's no heat to that at all, Kim. I don't know what you're talking about. These are not spicy. Well, my family is a very unique family, and they have their minds made up that I'm trying to hurt them with spicy peppers. But one of the first ones that I call my medium heat, or no heat for some others, is this Greek pepper right here. And I always pronounce it wrong, so I'm not going to mess it up. I'm just going to let you read it right off the pack. Now, I like to um, can these in some vinegar, and I will chop these up and put them on a salad. I'll put them on a pizza. I'll even chop these up and put them on a roast. Y'all, I love these Greek peppers. They are delicious. And I only grew a couple of plants because my family doesn't like them. And as long as I'm cooking with them, they have no clue that they're even in there. So I grow a couple plants, and I just don't tell them. 
Another one is the Hungarian wax pepper. Now y'all, this is another one of those peppers that these seeds are every bit 15 years old, Hungarian wax. Now it's similar to like a banana pepper, but these are spicy. So it's a medium heat spicy pepper, similar to my banana peppers, but my banana peppers are mild. They are not spicy. They're actually sweet. And these are spicy, so I have to be very careful with where I put them in the garden. Now, these didn't have a great germination rate, I'll be honest with you, 15-year-old seeds. I'm not surprised. But once they did germinate, they did produce very well. And I had these in my green stalks. Not in my main green stalk tower, but I had onesies, twosies throughout the garden and other spaces. Um, and that's where I had those growing. Plablano, I have a couple different brands of Plablanos. And um, these I got off of, what is it? So Right Seeds. I just got these off of Amazon. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I had issues with germination on these and I've had them a few years now. And the other Plablanos I have, I got from Baker Creek and these did really well. The Baker Creek seeds are new seeds that, I, well, new to me last year. Poblanos. I like to use my poblanos when I'm making my salsa. I like to put them in the oven and I like to, to roast them in the oven till they just get a little char on them. And then I throw everything in the mixer, blend it all up, and it gives a good roasted taste to my salsa. Poblano. Now, I also have an additional poblano pepper here. I got this from M.I. Gardner last year, the 2023 season, and um, it did okay. It did okay. I had it, I think, in a poor location in the garden. I believe if it had more sunlight, it would have done better, but it's a poblano pepper, and it has a little purple eggplant chocolate-looking color to it, and again, it did just Okay, I think I got half a dozen to a dozen peppers off of it. It was planted late, but you know, I got something off of the two seeds that I planted. I got more out of it than I put in. So I only planted two seeds, both seeds germinated and I ended up with somewhere between a half a dozen and a dozen peppers. So no loss there, but the plan is to put a little more space for my poblanos this upcoming year. Now, the next pepper, y'all, I got a story about this one, y'all, are my paprika peppers. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know, y'all, <laughs> I thought my paprika peppers had a sweetness to it, you know, a little heat, but more sweet than heat. Y'all, I put this in my tower. I put them with all of my sweet peppers, and I told my family they were sweet, and they thought I was trying to kill them. I was not trying to kill them. I just didn't know that these were medium heat peppers. But I grew them, I dehydrated them, I ground them up, I made a powder out of them. So I have smoky pack of, I have smoked paprika powder. That's what I made out of these. And once I ground it up into the powder, it wasn't spicy anymore. So it was no different than what I get from the grocery store. But if you try to take it and just take a bite out of one of these and you're not prepared for it, you may be looking for some water, but paprika, I grew these in my towers, in my green stalk planters. I also grew these in my raised beds. It doesn't say how long it takes before harvest. This was one of my earliest peppers to be ready in the garden. And just know y'all, they are not sweet. They're not sweet. They're medium heat, medium heat peppers. Y'all don't trick your family, mess your family up like I did. Next, we're going to move on to Anaheim chili or ancho. And this is where I start getting mixed up. Ancho and Anaheim. Ancho is either an Anaheim chili or it's a Poblano chili. I get it mixed up. I will definitely put it just below here. But if you're talking Ancho or if you're talking Anaheim or you're talking Poblano, I just don't want to get you mixed up. So Anaheim chili, of course, is a chili pepper. 
I got these from the Rustic Garden a few years ago. They grew very well. I still consider this medium heat as well. When I'm looking for a medium heat salsa, um, this is a little this is a little hotter in my mind than a poblano pepper. Um, I also use it in my chili. I use it to make um, hot sauce. And here's a picture of what the Anaheim chili looks like when it's fully ripe. So here's a picture. And then this Encho 101, these seeds probably will not germinate. My neighbor gave these to me. He purchased these seeds in, oh my goodness, they were packaged in 2001. This Ancho 101 was packaged in 2001. These seeds are 23 years old. So this will be our experiment for this upcoming year. We will see just how long seeds will last, but they're called Ancho 101. They were packaged in 2001, y'all. I can't make this up. And it looks like my neighbor got them in 2004, but they were packaged in 2001. We are going to see if we can get these 23 year old seeds to germinate. That'll be our experiment. And now I am moving on to what I call my hot peppers. And my hot peppers, I don't have many. I wish I could say I have ghost peppers and Carolina Reaper and those things, but I don't. Nobody will eat them in my, in my home. And even if I tried to make hot sauce out of them, nobody would touch it. So right now, I'm the only one who likes any kind of spicy food in the house. And all of the people who were around me who did like spicy food have moved out of state, so they're too far away to enjoy it. So I had to do just a little bit of heat at a time. So one of the first things that I would like to talk about, and some people would say, Kim, this is not spicy, and that's my jalapeno peppers. Now, I have jalapeno peppers from three different companies. I have a early, is it early? Yeah, it's early. I have early jalapeno peppers from um, Burpees, as well as from, got my hand in front of it, Botanical Interest. And they are early. They are very early, very, very, very early. And they produce very heavy. Now, these are very early, but they're also small. So they're very small jalapeno peppers. And it takes a whole bunch of them to do anything with. So I found at Baker Creek this Tam jalapeno pepper. And it is, in my mind, larger than the average jalapeno pepper. I believe it got, you know, every bit four or five inches long. It's called Tam Jalapeno Peppers. And it has a mild jalapeno um, flavor. And it doesn't have quite as much heat. And I made cowboy candy out of these. And my family could eat them, but it wasn't their favorite. But I was able to make cowboy candy and give these to my neighbor who enjoyed them tremendously. The next one that I'm spilling all over the table. All right, I gotta save my seeds. Gotta save the seeds. We can't lose any of these seeds. My packet was open and I wasn't aware. All right, I saved all of them. I didn't lose any. Then my next seed is Cayenne Long. I got it from the Rustic Garden. And Rustic Garden, he has a YouTube channel if you've never heard of him. Uh, when I first got on the YouTube, I spent a lot of time at the Rustic Garden um, YouTube channel. And I found out he sold seeds, so I thought I'd give him a try. And his seeds produce very well. Here's a picture of a cayenne long um, hot pepper. And I prefer to use cayenne pepper either for fresh eating, where I'll just cut them up and put them on whatever it is I'm eating, or to make hot sauce out of it. And this is what I grew up with. The cayenne long pepper is the only hot pepper I knew anything about growing up because it's the only thing that my grandparents had in their garden. And they would just store them in vinegar. They would can them in vinegar and we would eat them all winter long. We always had plenty of cayenne peppers around. And so I'm still losing seeds. 
Okay, they're falling out the other end now. Okay, all right, I'm gonna have to find another container for these. But let me save my seeds. Wouldn't it be a bad thing if I got these seeds mixed up? And I told my family that, oh, those are, those are Joe Parker's. They're sweet peppers. And my mom bit into that, y'all. I had to find a new house. She'll make me move out my own house if I did that to her. <laughs> All right. All right. The next one is from um, the Rustic Garden as well. And it's called Pacilia by Joe. I hope I'm saying that right. And I may not be. But here's a picture of that pepper. And I thought this was more of a medium heat pepper. And y'all, I was wrong. These things are, in my mind, hotter than the cayenne long. So I, I tried to cook with them in a few things, tried to sneak them in with my family, and that didn't work. So you let these get, the longer you leave them on, the hotter they get. And this Baggio pepper, can be, you know, it's got a little heat to it. I'm gonna be honest with you, it had more heat than it did flavor. And if I'm gonna go for flavor, I will go with the Cayenne Long. If I'm going for the heat, I will go with the Baggio. So there's the Baggio, there's the pitcher. So something you can think about. And many, many, if you don't wanna get from the Rustic Garden or MR Gardener, just keep checking around. I've seen this at many different um, websites if this is something you're interested in, but it puts me in the mind of a cayenne pepper, but it has more heat and less flavor. Next is my Serrano. And I got these from MI Gardener's Serrano pepper. And this pepper, I'm going up in, in, the, in the scale of heat here as far as I'm concerned. And, um, when these are ripe, they'll be red or orange in color. In my mind, these are great as well for um, making hot sauce out of them. And so I grew these. They're actually in my freezer. I never got around to making hot sauce yet. When I do, I will put the hot sauce video up so everybody can see it. But I use the Serrano peppers for hot sauce only. That's the only thing I use them for. Um, because I just didn't have that many hot peppers out there. So I gotta use everything I got to get to my hot sauce. Earlier, we talked about the habanada. Now from Harris Seeds, I got the habanero and it's a chocolate habanero. And here's a picture of what it looks like up in the corner here. And I planted this, none of my seeds germinated. And these were new seeds, they were I purchased these at the end of 22 for the 23 season. Nothing germinated. I only planted, what was it, three seeds, four seeds or something like that. And they didn't germinate, so I planted them again. I didn't get anything to germinate again. So we're going to try one more time to get these seeds to germinate. And then we're going to give up. But the, these are chocolate habanero peppers, and it has the flavor of a habanero. Uh, and it says it's good for marinades and barbecue sauce. So a chocolate habanero. And I can't tell you much about it because it didn't germinate, but we're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep trying. And then the last pepper that I have is called the dytil, a dytil, dytil. Um, it was a free pepper from Baker's Creek last year, and it's supposed to be blazing hot. And it's supposed to be about three and a half inch fruit. And it's supposed to ripen to this very orange yellowish color. And it says it has vicious heat and it's complex and fruity flavor. Now, I didn't have these in the best place in my garden. And for the longest time, I just had a beautiful green plant. It was green, it was beautiful. And then at the last minute, it started putting flowers on. And then it got cold and I had fruit that was like this big because it took them so long to start bearing fruit. So I didn't really get any of these. And I don't think that I'm gonna try to grow these again this upcoming season. I'm gonna try to focus more on the Serrano so I can get the hot sauce that I want and it's not like my family is going to eat this anyway. So 
I probably won't grow it again, but if you're interested, it's a blazing hot and it's this vicious heat. So if you want something super hot and you want to try something other than a California, uh, something other than the Carolina Reaper or a ghost pepper, this might be one for you. It's just not one for my family. Now those are my peppers for this upcoming year. You saw the ones that I'm growing. You saw the ones that my family didn't like so much. And you also saw the one we're going to experiment with over this upcoming year. I hope I shared some different varieties that you've never seen before that you might be interested in in this upcoming year. I will provide other seeds that I plan to grow in this upcoming season, but I will lump them all together. Peppers and tomatoes are the only um, vegetables that I grow so many different kinds. They got to make their own video. They, they have to have their own video because it would take too long to do them plus all of the other vegetables in my garden. So we will do one more video on what seeds to plant for this upcoming season. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I always tell you, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, and I hope there will be a next time where you visit Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.